Call all hands. Beat to quarters. Now, out the gun. Stand by this tavern battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lint stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. boat, a cargo ship groaning with tons of waterlogged rice. But this was the first time a presentable craft, small as she was, had been entrusted to me. Aged barely 21, I felt as if every telescope in our Mediterranean fleet must be trained on me as I sailed our little prize ship, La Mouche, into Gibraltar's harbor. No, it's too bad, sir. Can't quite understand it. What's too bad, Mr. Winyard? Why, I, I don't think she's in herself yet, sir. I've been using my glass all the way up the anchorage. Not a sign of the indefatigable. Mm, perhaps you put in at Malta, after all. Well, anyhow, our crew won't mind a little rest. Oh, I know I won't, sir. That's certain. Oh, confound it. With, with Captain Pellew not yet returned, I suppose it's my duty to report to the Port Admiral fairly quickly. Oh, so I'd rather catch up on my sleep. <laughs> Welcome back aboard, sir. They've already come for the prisoners. You look a little weary, Mr. Hornblower. I am with it. Three hours wait after I'd reported in, and then three minutes with the Admiral. It was warm enough over there today, too, winter or not, in this dress uniform. I've got some news for you, though. News, sir? Are we going to have shore leave? Well, tonight, perhaps, but not tomorrow. We'll be too busy. La Mouche is to be commissioned into the service without delay. Into the British service, sir? That's the idea. Good, good. We never have enough swift vessels for dispatches. Mm. Then he gave orders for all the proper transfer papers and, and all that, and uh, I had to wait around for another hour. Dispatches? But, but surely we're not going out at once. Not before our own captain comes back. I've got our orders here. You are hereby requested and required to take His Majesty's sloop La Mouche under your command. So soon as the latest dispatches destined for England shall be put in your charge... You are commanded to proceed to Plymouth with the utmost expedition. To Plymouth? Well, now. Uh, sounds better to you, eh? Yes, it does. I haven't been home for more than a year. Yes, I can understand that. I last set foot on English soil three years ago. Wait. Beg your pardon, Mr. Hornblower. I just remembered. While you were gone, a cat from Saw delivered you this letter. Sir, huh? Half hour ago. It couldn't be... What, the... the dispatches? Well, hurry up and let me see. You shouldn't be so forgetful, will you? Oh, no, confound it. I'd rather it were the dispatches with orders to sail at once in this sort of... Oh, God, listen to this. Their Excellencies, Major General Sir Hugh and Lady Dalrymple, request the pleasure of acting Lieutenant Horatio Hornblower's company at dinner today at five o'clock at Government House. My name is Alexander, sir. Lord Philip Alexander. And you? Horatio Hornblower, sir. Acting Lieutenant aboard the Indefatigable. Uh... No, I suppose I should say, commanding the new sloop, La Mouche, with my first independent command. Mm, I see. 
And their excellency is most happy that you could dine today, Miss Hornblower. Well, thank you. I, uh... Now, if I may present you, sir, will you come this way? Sir. Your excellency, this is Mr. Hornblower, the new captain of La Mouche. Ah, oh. we're pleased to see you, Mr. Hornblower. Thank you, sir. That's very kind of you. And now, Mr. Hornblower, may I present you the Duchess of Wharfdale? Your Grace, this is Mr. Hornblower of La Mouche. The Duchess of Wharfdale, Mr. Hornblower. Um, <clears throat> Your Grace. So this is the fellow in question, Your Excellency. Oh, now, really, my dear, are you going to entrust me to an infant in arms? <laughs> Young fellow, you look exactly like a gander on the green. I expect you to hiss at any moment. <laughs> and then and there she did an imitation of me, sticking her chin out and dangling her arms, which, which brought a roar of laughter from the whole room. <laughs> I just just stood there in red-faced confusion. Now, don't be hard on the young fellow, you people. There, he's so awfully young. And there's nothing to be ashamed of, something to be proud of, for that matter. I think it's wonderful, Mr. Ornblower, to be trusted with a ship at your young age. Oh, yes, 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 indeed, Your Grace. You know, it's, uh... Ah, may I give you my arm, uh, my dear Duchess? Oh, charmed, I'm sure. Oh, I confess I'm thoroughly mystified, Lord Philip. What does she mean about entrusting her to me, for instance? <laughs> As usual, the man most concerned is the very last to know. What is it? Why, when you sail tomorrow with dispatches, Hornblower, you're going to have the honor of bearing her grace with you to England. But you're not... Oh, no, you're not serious. Oh, but, but who is she? I mean, she doesn't... You heard my introductions, didn't you? She's the Duchess of Wolfdale. Well, no, yes, yes, but... Well, I, I don't like to sound as if I... But she... You know, she, well, she doesn't talk like a Duchess. <laughs> No, the old duke was in his dotage when he married her, was he? She was a tavern keeper's widow, so her friend said. You can imagine, if you like, what her enemies said. Mr. what on earth is she doing in Gibraltar? Oh, she was at Florence when the French marched in. She got to Leghorn and bribed the coaster to bring her here. She asked Sir Hugh to find her passage home to England. Sir Hugh then asked the Admiral, and that's where you come in, poor fellow. first independent command was in condition to face the sea and, and our enemies sailing the sea. I had exactly four pop-gun four-pounders as arms, and my crew numbered only eleven. So I knew our only safety lay in flight if we ran into trouble. Towards noon, the dispatches arrived, and then came the Duchess and her maid, accompanied by Sir Hugh and Lady Dalrymple. Welcome aboard, Your Excellencies. I, I deeply regret that I can muster but two boatswain's pipes in Your Honor. You see, sir, my crew... Oh, no trouble, Mr. Hornblower. As governor of Gibraltar, one tires of ceremonials, you know. Well, well, here's our young man. How sweet you are to bother with two extra passengers, Mr. Hornblower. Two, you mean? Uh, yes, my maid, Mary. Oh, I... Uh, well, uh, a, a great honor, Your Grace, I, I assure you. I must apologize to Her Grace uh, in advance for her somewhat uh, <clears throat> cramped quarters, Your Excellency. You, you see, in so small a sloop, ma'am, her your cabin will be, well, minute. Oh, Mary, and I can live through it. As soon as the governor had gone ashore, we brought La Mouche up to her anchor. Cape Marroquie, and set a course for Cape St. Vincent. That sun's near invisible on the horizon over there. Queer night, ain't it, sir? Yes. Coming up, Patrick. 
Well, that's the price you have to pay for a fair wind in wintertime. The cool land breeze strikes the Atlantic, and a fog is the result. These sickers still be mourning, I wouldn't wonder. Yes, sir. Yes, I think I shall revise my night orders. We, we must be sure of keeping clear of Cape St. Vincent in the fog. Yes, sir. I'll set a course due west instead of west by north. Is that you, sir? I can't see for the fog. Well, what's wrong, Winnie? Oh, don't speak too loud, sir, but, but simply listen. I don't hear anything, except the sea at our bars and our blocks clattering and... Wait, wait. Winnie, listen. Do I... Yes, do I hear the sea breaking under someone else's bars? Is, is that it? There's a ship close alongside in the fog, sir. I'm almost positive. What kind of ship? Have you got any idea? I'll try to send below for you, sir. I heard an order given in in Spanish. change of course it brought us smack into the midst of them in the night. Oh, if I'd only held to my first course. It's too late for that now. Listen now, sir. What's going on now? It's positively uncanny. We're within arm's length of each other and they don't know it. They're setting more sail now that dawn is coming. Spaniards always snug down at night. Don't set their gallants till daybreak. Well, they make enough noise about it. Yes. Let's hope they're on a different course from ours. Then we'll soon be beyond and through them, won't we, sir? Well, we can hope so, yes. But, well, it's hardly likely. Mr. Lang, very good, boy. Winnet was right. It was uncanny. See, Mr. Winnet, if we were crossing their course, we'd have passed some ship very close where we haven't. Well, the thing that worries me is, how long will this fog hold? Oh, the light's growing. Can't be altered, of course. Sir. Wait, look, look forward there. There's a clear patch of sea. We're almost into it. Sir, sir, I can see the shape of the big Spanish standstill, Jackson. Tell those men forward to stand still, too. No panic, no running. If we draw attention to ourselves, we're done. Oh, thank heaven, at least our men understand. There's no more of that bustle on deck. Mm, we must behave as if we had every, every much of right to be here as any of them. I thought there's another bank of mist. We're bearing straight through into it. Oh, thank the Lord. Yes, hands where Sip Jackson. Lay it on the port tack. Mr. Holder. Oh, oh, it's, it's, it's you, no? Look, don't you think your grace had better go below? Oh, no, please. I did go below before when you ordered me so sharply, but I had to know what was happening. So I came up again and stood way aft. He's to be out of your way. Yes, well, I'm sorry, I... ma'am. I've got no time for a conversation now. Go. Good Lord, I, I forgot the dispatches. What, sir? The dispatches, the dispatch. Here, you take over the quarterdeck, will you? I've got to go run down to my cabin. Find them, sir? Yes, I did indeed. Now, hand me that belaying pin, and I want a bit of line. When these go overboard, they've got to sink. Please, please, Mr. Hornblower, do tell me what you're doing. I'm sinking our dispatches, Your Grace. Two envelopes of them. But then they'll be lost for good. Well, I've no idea what they contain, but I don't want the Spaniards to read them. I could look after them for you. Indeed, no, I could, Mr. Hornblower. No, no, no. They'd search your baggage, ma'am. If I put them in my baggage, I'll put them next to my skin. That's what I'll do. They won't search me in any case. Remember, after all, I am a duchess, and the Spanish are nothing if not gentlemen. Well, I... Don't stand there I... staring, young man. If they should capture us, well, I hope they won't, but if they should, they'll never keep me prisoner. They'll send me back to Lisbon or put me aboard a British ship as soon as ever they can. So I could deliver your dispatches. Better late than never. Well, possibly. It's an I'll idea. I'll guard them like my life. I swear I will. I'll tell no one I have them till I hand them to a king's officer in England. Fog's thinning, sir. Quick, give them here. Hand me a yard of that rope. You Hurry. are, ma'am. Turn your backs now, you two young men. I'll have them stowed in no time. The, the sun's coming out, sir. Full this time, I'm afraid. Yes, we're going to lose that fog for good. Dissolving fast there to port. Look. 
There's a Spanish flag. Heaven. How many ships are there? I see three or four. Well, at least a dozen, ma'am. Seems we're surrounded. Tell the helmsman, starboard two points. Starboard two points it is, sir. What's that? That's cannon shot, your grace. They've seen us finally for what we are. Those aren't simply warning shots. We could beat them off once at least, sir. No, no. Belay that order in the guns. Look over there. Twenty guns trained on us to port and fifty more to starboard. And we're the size of a pleasure yacht. No, don't fire. But, sir, no point in dying uselessly, Matthews. We have women aboard, remember. They could sink us in ten seconds. Sir, the frigate's putting two boats into the water to look, port us. Yes, your grace had better look to your baggage. You'll be leaving us soon for, well, other quarters with the dons. I, I hope more comfortable. Your first ship. Oh, I wish I could tell you how sorry I am. As if I'd only held my course. You see, don't, I... don't ever blame yourself. Promise you won't, Mr. Hornblower. Come over here in a moment. There's, there's something I must say to you in private. Hmm. Yes, Your Grace? Now, stop your gracing me. I'm no duchess. What do you mean? Uh... No time to tell it all now. Those Spanish boats are almost here. I'm Kitty Cobham. Ever heard of me? Kitty Co Cobham? Well, I may have done, ma'am, somehow, somewhere, I think. Never mind. You're too young for the name to mean much anyhow, but five years ago I was playing at Drury Lane Theatre and Dick Sheridan himself said he'd never had a better Lydia language. An actress, then? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. Yes, Kitty Cobham. Oh. Sir, the John's boats are hooking on. Uh, yes, yes. Um, come with me, please, Mr. Bennett. Do you speak Spanish, sir? Perhaps three words. Vengo a bordo para aprenderle, señor el teniente. Um, <clears throat> señor el teniente español, um, we have ladies aboard. Uh -huh. Ladies. All proper consideration uh, we must be asked for uh, uh, señora la duquesa de, de Wolfdale. La duquesa? Yes. Si, si. Ah, la duquesa. Si, señor el teniente. She shall be very great, respected. <laughs> Captivity is at best a dreadful thing. A few weeks at Cadiz, then I was transferred to the Spanish naval prison at Ferrol, an empty sail loft where I lived with other captive officers. Four months of this, then one day, I was escorted to the office of the Commandant, who had as aide a renegade Irishman named O'Brien. You've been promoted. How do you mean promoted? Well, promoted. Here's the letter. The Spanish authorities are informed that on account of his meritorious service, the acting commissioner, Mr. Horatio Hornblower, midshipman and acting lieutenant, has been confirmed. Huh? And here's a letter for you, lieutenant. Must have come in the same dispatch. Letter? Looks like it's been readdressed all over Spain. There. That'll be all. You can read it in the corridor outside. Oh, thank you, Mr. Brown. letter. My first letter since my capture. What's it? Darling boy. Who on earth would start a letter to me calling me darling boy? I hope it will make you happy. Little man, that what you gave me has reached its destination. They told me at the Admiralty when I delivered it that they were very pleased with what you'd done. And just imagine... One of those admirals, he's an old dear, is a shareholder at Drury Lane. Whoever would have thought of such a thing? And he smiled at me, <laughs> and I smiled at him. I didn't know he was a shareholder then, and I only smiled out of the kindness of my heart. <laughs> That's a big heart, Kitty Cobham, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.